Episode 4 Ship This ship is going down. Grab the things you couldn't bear to lose. Leave the things that you would let go down gladly. A relief. What do you grab? All the furniture and machinery of your life laid out around you. The things you pick up are what make you who you are. Or at least who you aim to be. The gap between will lessen as you live and grow wiser. We turn to young people to see the divide before it fractured. Held still and innocent. Look up and through the translucent autumn leaves, obscuring the face of the sun. The fairies. I opened my eyes suddenly and drew in a sharp breath. My dark small room swam into focus. The clock showed me it was far too early to get up. I have trouble telling time, but even I know that half past three is practically night. I glanced at the window. The sky was dark. Droplets of rain snaked their way down the glass. What had woken me? All was totally silent and still, save the gentle background of the breeze and the trees. I surveyed my room a second time, and suddenly it all seemed alien to me. Maybe it was seeing it in the dark, or looking at it really properly for a moment, as if through someone else's eyes. The stuffed toys stacked up against the wall beneath the window. Why were they lying there? staring at me with blank, cold eyes. My fingers and toes clenched tight. I was very uncomfortable in my bed. The sheet was sticking to me. I felt too hot. The mattress, once comforting, seemed far too soft. It gave too much around me. It was suffocating me. I ripped the duvet back from myself. I didn't need it. I needed to be exposed. I didn't need protection. I began to feel very claustrophobic. The feeling creeped its way up my back, and I had to get out. I stepped forward and swung the window open with more desperation than I intended. The cold breeze against my face was a huge relief. I needed this. I thought of my mother and father asleep in the other room, and strangely felt no love or longing for them now. I was separate. I felt no fear of the world outside. I had a longing to be submerged in it. Usually the thought of venturing out alone into the forest would scare me, but tonight it thrilled me. The boys at school would be so impressed when I told them, although that's irrelevant. I viewed my previous self then as merely a dream. In fact, I couldn't focus on anything. There was only the now and the longing. I tore off my childishly colourful pyjamas and stood by the open window, as naked as the day I was born. My arms prickled with goosebumps as the rain began to bite into my pale flesh. A storm was brewing. I could feel it. It was part of me. It was building in me too. I felt alive then. My instincts heightened. I felt my clarity of sight grow and my hearing sharpen. All petty human thoughts evaporated, and I was left with the raging primal instinct that took hold. Flesh on dirt, weather on skin, that's what I craved now. And when I realised that I was thirsty, it was no surprise to me that I climbed onto the window ledge and leapt towards the tree in search of a river, instead of seeking the bathroom tap. Running, climbing, power, wet dark, fresh. I felt so exposed and perceptive. I could understand everything around me with so much more clarity. It was unbelievable I could function how I did before. I found the river with ease and knelt down beside the rushing torrent. All doubts about what my family would do or think or say vanished with that first gulp. Icy to the brink of pain on my throat, but I loved it. I gulped it down. 
All that mattered now was myself. I buried my toes gratefully into the cold, wet mud. There was no past or future, worry or emotion, only survival and thrill. I felt all the forest around me move in harmony. It swirled about me with a dark beauty, and I was held in its grasp. But then I felt a presence, something that I was not totally aware of. I could not decipher its intricacies. Strange, this was alien to me now. My understanding was base, but I saw and felt all. What was this? It appeared to be a bright light on the other side of the stream. It seemed blue, no red, in a yellowy hue. It sang, but was silent. It became the colours it sang. It was an enigma. But it enchanted me immediately. I had to be close to it, but as I reached out, it was in the distance, beckoning to me. I realised then something very strange. The music that it emanated had been with me ever since I awoke. It was this that had woken me in the first place. My higher level mind began to seep back into me in order to try to cope with this. It had been in the background the whole time, just outside my conscious thought. It had provoked me into this state. It had called to me from the forest and I had followed it blindly. I began to become suspicious and scared when it increased in intensity and volume. The music was the colour, it was one and the same. Its form was plain but vague. Its song collapsed upon me and I was overcome. My humanity surrendered to instinct and I was forced to chase it. I needed to catch it, nothing else mattered. It was the source of all beauty and happiness for me. It was perfect. I waded into the torrent before me. I barely felt what I knew to be a relentless and bitterly cold force. It didn't matter. It reached up to my lips at its deepest, but I strode on. I was enthralled, filled and controlled by the light before me. It danced and thrilled from tree to tree, always enticingly close but worryingly far, as if it could dance out of reach at any moment. I began to run once more, and it delighted. I was pulled both emotionally and physically after it. I didn't care that I was being led, I wanted it. After an eternity of an instant, we arrived. I felt the conclusiveness of this destination emanate through my very being. I was the light now. We were one and the same. I stood before a tall dirt cliff face. There was a tunnel before me, partially hidden by foliage. It was totally dark, but I sensed it turned a corner after a short while and buried deep into the ground. It seemed to me as though it would be a haven, dark and warm. I could lie there with my light and be happy always. My light hovered in the entrance and pulled me inside. I was happy to descend. As I began to go down, I had to kneel and crawl. My mouth spread into a smile. I was an animal now. I had surrendered thought to this thing. It was my everything. I felt the all-consuming chorus begin to harmonize, and I became aware of other lights up ahead. This was their home. It would be a paradise. They would love me always. They were all I needed and wanted. I'd left the human world behind for good. I ducked lower still as I squeezed myself through a small gap after the light, and I emerged into a large chamber. I immediately felt the presence of all the other lights inside. But it didn't feel right somehow. The lights began to float towards me with a menacing lethargy. Their music eased into a terrorising chorus. I realised that I was naked then. Totally exposed, but in a helpless way, not a powerful way. I was completely alone, in the dark, and helpless. How had I been led like an animal? I was at the mercy of these lights now. The words of the song became clearer. 
They had always been there, but they swam into focus now. I wandered alone to the forest one night, led by a music strange to hear, and followed the glow of a shimmering light that seemed to grow distant as I grew near. The lights dimmed, and their forms became apparent. Tiny bodies, faces and limbs, cold black eyes and leering grins, fragile wings that beat with a malignant ferocity. Their pointed noses bent down towards me. They surged forward and sucked everything from me. I felt the power leave my body. Every trace of who I was fed into them. My last real thoughts were of home and my family and friends. My humanity was stripped away by those greedy tricksters. I saw into them just before I was taken completely. They had to open up to feed on me. They would take others strip them of their identities to grow strong, enchant and lure children to their dooms. This was my final pity, that they would do to others what they had done to me. And then the oblivion took hold, and empty blackness crept in. They say I was found wandering the forest the following morning muttering the words of the song with eyes as blank as those of my toys. I was gone. An empty shell was all that was left. These are my final words. The final scrap of myself has now been emptied onto this page. I am gone now. All I hope is that my words will help others. Don't go into the woods at night, because the fairies will sing to you. The woods were alive with the fragrance of spring, but winter was everywhere clear to see. The moon shone bright and a bat on the wing beckoned me closer and said to me, a clearing close in the forest you'll find, a fabulous banquet, a fairy ball. If you close your eyes and you open your mind, the veil disappears and you'll see it all. Dreamscape. I'm chasing it. It's important, really important, but I don't know why. I'm in a forest, blurry and dark. Vague shapes of trees rush by on either side of me, none in front. There seems to be a long clearing through which I'm sprinting. Then I see it, a large white cube in the distance, hovering a foot off the ground. It's huge. It's getting closer, or rather, I'm getting closer to it. It's moving away from me, but not fast. I'm gaining. I must reach it, and soon. It must be this towering cube that's clearing the trees. They bend easily away in its wake, producing this perfect pathway through the forest, like a corridor of grass and trees. It's huge, roughly the size of a house, Grass underfoot, pain in my chest. I must have been running for a long time. My lungs hurt. My legs burn, but they continue. The incessant thud of my feet on the ground is all I hear. I can feel the beat of my heart in my chest, frantic and painful. Panic in my mind. I have to reach it now. I speed up further still. I can see it clearly. A fine white mist seems to trail behind it. I reach the dusty trail and slam into the back wall of the cube. I manage to stop myself with my hands. They sting. I realise now how fast I must have been running. Inhumanly so. I look at my palms and they are white with what appears to be chalk dust. I trace my fingers over the surface as I walk behind it. I look up but the surface is blank, featureless chalk. Now I'm here and I'm not sure what I must do but the panic left me as I reached it. I slowly make my way around the side of the cube. The fact that it's floating doesn't seem to bother me. The second side is as blank as the first. But as I make my way around the next corner, I'm greeted by a staircase. 
set into the side of the cube. It appears to have been carved, sticking out from the side by about a foot. It has the same rounded edges as the cube. Who carved it or for what purpose, I have no idea. All I know is that I must now climb it and see what meets me. I'm not in a hurry, a bit apprehensive. I hop onto the lowest step and gain my balance. I steel myself and begin to make my way up. I raise the fine white dust with every footfall. There's only about 20 or so steps, but they are large and steep. My head eventually passes the top edge of the cube, and I peer at its surface. For a moment I am disappointed, as it seems to be as blank as the first two sides. But as I climb higher, I see a small round hole at its centre. As I step onto the top, I glance over my shoulder and gasp with terror. I am at least 100 feet in the air now. Through the thin wispy clouds, I can just make out the ground and the trees far below. I wobble and almost tumble backwards, but I manage to stop myself just in time. My heart's racing. I throw myself forwards and stay low, making absolutely sure I'm balanced. I crawl forwards on my stomach, towards the circular hole. As I near it, I realise it's filled with water, dark and totally still. I grip the rim of the hole and pull myself forwards before standing up gingerly. As I look around, I realise the chalk surface of the cube now stretches into the distance on all sides. I take no notice and begin to prepare myself for my inevitable descent. I don't know where it will lead or what will happen, but I do know that it must be done. I take one final look around at the huge expanse of featureless white. I then take a huge gulp of air and leap forwards into the depths. The moment I break the dark surface, shock courses through my body. The water is as cold as ice, it hurts my skin. I plunge in up to my shoulders and my head goes under before I can react. I'm instantly alert and begin to thrash my limbs violently in an attempt to reach the surface and haul myself out. The surface quickly slips away from me and I fall further and further away. I'm dropping unnaturally fast, as if pulled down by some invisible force. The deeper I get, the more my body starts to relax. My flailing limbs come to a gradual stop. I begin to feel a sense of peace and I go absolutely still. My hair drifts out above and large orbs of air escape my lips. My eyes adjust to the dark and I can faintly make out a dim light far beneath me. It suddenly dawns on me that I've been sinking for a long time. My mind had gone practically blank. I can sense a huge expanse of space around me, perhaps infinite. I begin to feel as though I am no longer sinking, but instead the water is moving upwards past me. It slows until I am eventually just drifting aimlessly. The pressure that I felt eases and the bubbles disappear into the darkness. I touch the skin of my arm and it doesn't feel wet. I suddenly realise that I am no longer suspended in water at all. As I look around me once more, I see small white pinpricks of light in the distance in all directions. I breathe in through my nose and discover that there is air. I can feel it whirling around me and making my hair dance. All my clothes and skin are as dry as if I'd never been in water. I'm beginning to doubt that I ever was. It's irrelevant now as it's in the past. All that matters is the present. The air circulation strengthens until it's roaring in my ears and tossing me around. Then a small green square emerges from the darkness and I notice I am now sitting in a small neat garden. It seems to be summer as the sun is high and hot. Well maintained lawn beneath me and trimmed hedges circle me. Tasteful water features bubble and flow while birds wheel across the sky. I am reclined on a soft deck chair beneath them. I roll over close my eyes and return to that warm darkness. The next place arrives with new rules. I accept them on their own terms. Distantly, I feel the breeze move my hair.
You brush your teeth. They cross a busy intersection casually. You look into the mirror and wonder about the face looking back at you. They stride through underpasses. Footsteps echo off the walls. You climb into bed after a long day, anticipating another. They clamber a high wall at the edge of a major city. Your mind explores the day coming that won't be long, cut short. They tread through a boggy field, framed by open space and crusted hills. You think of them out there in the world somewhere, heading towards your part of the world, breaching the spaces that define your life gradually. You are asleep. They are very much awake.